Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. I'm Beanie, and this is Scroft, and I have taken over the intro for today. I think we're on episode 5 now, and from what I know, Scroft is going to be teaching me a bit about field prep. So, I don't know if you want to explain it better than that, because I can see all the fancy equipment around, but yeah, I've... I, I'm probably wrong in what I think half the stuff is. <laughs> it, all, yeah, there's a lot to learn today, but it'll be fun, I promise you. Wow. Fingers crossed. And you are a good teacher, so I'm hoping I'm going to learn a lot as well. Pressure. Now there's pressure. So we're in November. We have progressed a month. Now, the reason I've done that is because it was just a little bit too late in the last month, but this is actually on the crop calendar the last month we can aim to plant something in so by the end of this in-game day what we're going to do we're actually going to try and progress through this episode so it won't just be november we're going to get this field to our right here which is the first field we did work on if you remember it was the wheat field yeah and as you can tell if you look at it now what it's telling me is its current state is it was harvested there's some weeds on it that have started to pop through it's you know it's not in a very good state we need to try and get it ready for the the next harvest and that's what we're going to do Happy with that? Happy with that. Sounds Damn. good to me. <laughs> I know. I, this one is, it's a difficult one for me to actually t like show you in just one episode. I'm going to be honest with you. You'll you'll probably learn a lot more when we do a proper series through different types yeah. of fields and everything like that. Because it really depends on what, what mods you're using also, like what the state of the field's in and all that stuff. We're not playing base game, as I call it. We're, we're using precision farming. The reason I'm doing that and showing you this way is because it's the most in-depth way and it's the way I like to play. So I think it's best to just carry on with that kind of theme of my channel, the way I like yeah. to play. And I'll teach you the precision farming way because I think it improves the game. It just makes it... There's more game-changing dynamics, you could say, to it. That It's not just as simple. It's, it's not simplified. It makes it more in-depth. Uh, but it gives you a better reward at the end as well. So it, it does benefit to do it that way. Yeah, sounds good. I know you like to play realistic, and I think, you know, that's a good way to go, I suppose, because it's a whole pa po the whole point of a simulation. That's I it, guess. Yeah. You can just try and be as realistic as possible, but yeah, there's mods out there that change the game. And this is a good one as well, because it was actually developed by Giants um, and a team. It was actually a multiple t uh, people in a team, I think, that just kind of John Deere were involved in it. Uh, there was a university Ooh. that I forget but it was a university in the UK somewhere. Um, they were involved mm -hmm. in it. And it just yeah. Yeah, it's about modernising and also making sustainable farming in a way. There's just it's just about improving like your environmental score will give you more money in return. Kind of like that's the reward. Right. So the more environmentally friendly you are to the field and you know, protecting topsoil, all that stuff and less fuel, you know, less passes over the over the field kind of yeah. reward you more in the end. Okay, yeah, because I remember when we dropped off, uh, what was it we dropped off in the last episode? Was it the mm, corn? The flour. We, yeah, we took the, the corn. Yeah, and then we did flour yeah. after, didn't we? Yeah, when, when we sold it, I saw like an extra so much come up for an environmental score bonus That's or it. something like that, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So you can get up to... A fifteen percent bonus to every soil, which is obviously a lot of money. Because if you like, we've got sorghum right now, and it's going to technically give us a quarter of a million pound. If we've got a fifteen percent oh. bonus on that, you're going to get a lot more money. And that's just because only if you've got a good environmental score. If you also get like an uh, environmental score that's lower than like the base kind of fifty score, it's, it's like goes from zero to a hundred. So if you've got fifty is your environmental score you'll get no bonus but no penalty if you start going below 50 you start taking a penalty to everything you sell but then if you yeah. go above it it's up to 100 that's when the 15 percent um increase in returns kind of is the benefit nice. so it does have a penalty but it's it's like pretty much a good score starts with sampling now we're not going to it... do go on sorry no, i was right. just going to ask if it was easy to adhere to like... yeah yeah as long as you've got the right equipment but it's, it depends how... Like, if we started now our survival series, it'd probably be difficult. We kind of just do the best with what we've got because it yeah. costs money to get some of the certain kit. Like, there's a, there's a sprayer that has this 
thing called spot spraying technology. They cost that cost a fortune, really, to have that added to the sprayer. It's like forty right. grand or something like that. It's it's a lot of money. Ooh. But what it does is it gives you a better environmental score and it just kinda it's like imagine a sprayer with cameras on it and every time yeah. it sees a weed it sprays herbicide just over that weed. It doesn't spray it over the whole of the field. Is that a real life thing? I think so, because it does say spot spray in TM. So I think it's trademarked because of this is an actual probably product that you can get it probably costs a fortune i've never actually seen it but if we did the research which we probably should do now that we've said it because it is a good question it's probably something out there like that yeah i mean i mean yeah it's just crazy because when when you're talking about oh you know when we're gonna harvest this and sell it we'll probably bring in a quarter of a million and you think oh my goodness i'm in the wrong industry but then when you think about the price of everything that you have to add on like I know one car- uh, carbon combine is like the equivalent to a quarter of a million, isn't it? So More, probably more, more. probably like half a million. <laughs> and then you've got to think of the maintenance each year. Like you're spending like, probably like, I wouldn't like to guess, but you could be spending like 30,000 a year just to maintain them. It's probably crazy money, really. Right, so precision farming. When you're on this page, it shows you loads of different things. We're looking at this precision farming score. We also have to make sure we take soil samples. Like, there's two ways of doing soil samples. There's an easy way which costs more money, which is just going into this menu and then purchasing the soil samples. But we can do that because we've got unlimited money. So if you just click on field nine, it'll go like, you'll see like a blue highlight around it so it knows you're on it. Yeah. And it'll give you loads of information about like economic analysis, which we don't really need to focus on at all. But if you see at the bottom, it'll say purchase soil information. Oh, yeah, why? If want, yeah, if you press that. Yes. So it basically said field nine, 5.71 hectares, and then you pay, it's basically telling you the amount of samples. So it's taking 60 samples, which costs 6,000, and then it's like a service provider cost, which is 4,500. Mm-hmm. So it's 10 and a half grand to take soil samples in that whole field. You can buy a soil sampler, which means you don't pay the service provider, but you still have to send them off to a lab, and then you have to wait a bit of time to get the results back. Now, what that does is it shows you the soil types in that field, but it also gives you some more information. So if you press right on where it says at the top, it's got soil information, and underneath it should have said like soil type. If you press right, you'll go to pH. Yeah. And each like one is, is, it's like you've seen it in school with the, you know, the litmus paper or whatever it's called, litmus something like that. I was going to say the periodic table, but it's not that. No, no, it just, yeah. it's an indicator basically of like pH. So you've obviously yeah. got the more red is acidic and then you've got all the way up to the alkaline, but it doesn't go too far. It's still just a little bit past neutral. So it's at eight. So a lot of the time with these soils, the pH is kind of like where it should be for that soil type. So not all soil types are going to have the same kind of target pH. But the right. reason we've got pH in it is because the more we do in the field, the more we harvest, the more we put fertilizer down, it's going to reduce that uh, soil to an acidic state so we need to use lime to bring it back up with it being an alkaline that's the yes. whole point of why they put lime down so that's usually the first step we do um, when you've prepped the field so that's one bit of information we need to get now all these have an effect on our yield now we have a potential yield which is if we do everything right we can get that potential yield each soil type has a potential yield kind of like ceiling so if you're in loam you can get up to 125 percent, which is obviously really good and it kind of varies but loam's the best so i know this is a lot of information but like i said i'm just going to tell you everything it doesn't matter how much you digest of this really (laughs) you'll do a lot of it in gameplay so in the future Uh, but it's best thing to know is that loam's the best soil type it gives you the more that if you do everything right and hit all its targets you'll get the highest expected yield from the from that potential yield um so lime is one thing we need to do which is the ph score then if you go across again you'll get see nitrogen yeah it's all red it should be like really dark red because of the fact it's got no nitrogen in it it's it's literally zero kilograms per hectare now nitrogen is basically fertilizer so we put a certain amount of fertilizer on depending on the soil type um so again okay it just depends on what the soil type is what crop you've put in and everything kind of aims to that and there's a way of doing it automatically you don't have to do it manually the a lot of the time the, the sprayers and whatever else you're using spreader but you just put fertilizer in press go it'll tell you that um you know this is what it's it's supposed to be at and it'll just automatically apply the right amount okay yeah 
And then if you go to the next tab, it's seed rate. So each soil type has a seed rate. Um, so when we're seeding, it will automatically apply more seeds or less seeds, depending on what soil type we put in. Obviously, more seeds is not very good because it costs more money. But, you know, some soil types are like that. You need to put more seeds in to have that kind of same percentage germination successful rate, if that makes sense, success rate. Mm -hmm. So um, and then we're back to soil types. So really, all you need to do in this menu at the start when you get your field is just take soil samples. Make sure you know what you've got in the field. So you know what soil types, you know where you need to be. That's the yes. aim. Because then when we use the spreader and the sprayer and the planter, it'll automatically know what lime to add in that area, what fertilize to add, and also how many seeds at the seed rate, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So I know that was a hell of a lot of information. I kind of put this episode off for a while because I think, you know, you could just play base game, right? And then literally yeah. you just get out in the field, do a bit of mulching because it gives you a little, like two. I think it's like 2.5% bonus yield if you do mulching uh, and you're going to probably cultivate you might not even do that you might direct seed in and so on and then eventually you start doing some rolling which gives you another 2.5 percent and you you do your lime you do your fertilizer make sure you get rid of weeds and at the end you've just got your harvest but the precision farming just means that you've got like a bit more accurate to the soil type and the what it requires okay yeah so first thing you need to do in a field after it's like been harvested, if this was in a cultivated state and we just started the map, we wouldn't have to do this. But because we've harvested, we need to mulch this down. Okay. So we're going to get a 2.5% bonus to mulching. So what are we going to do now? So we're both going to get in one of these tractors. Yeah. So you want to take that other one over here. And these are the best mulches I could find. I haven't actually got any bigger ones, so it's probably going to take a little bit of time, but we can do it. Yeah. It's the beauty of a time lapse. <laughs> that is true. And we're going to go over this field and mulch it. Okay. So if, if you want to take the right hand side of where I'm at, and you'll see the kind of texture that I'm doing. So basically, all mulching is, is you're breaking down then kind of like stalks that we've left from when we last harvested. Yes. And then when we get to the next stage, which is uh, like you could be direct seeding in or cultivating or whatever you want to do. You know, it just gives you a little bit of a bonus, mainly. That's the only reason we're doing it in game, to get the 2.5% bonus. And when we roll it, that's an extra 2.5. So potentially mulching and rolling can give you like 5%. Really? Okay. Right, I'd say this is helping us, won't you? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Many what? ends. Uh, oh, I forgot it. <laughs> nice. No. <laughs> I think it was just it Many made sense with light work. Sorry. There we go. There you go. <laughs> you got there in the end. Well yeah. done, love. Thanks. But no, <laughs> it's better to do it like this because we can. For some reason, I've just not got any mods in there that uh, for this this playthrough where the, the mulches are any bigger than six meters. And then I thought uh, the size of the field. I didn't want to just kind of like paint it out and make it a smaller field. I just thought no, we'll do the full field. But why not just get a load of workers to help us out? Exactly. Speaking is we've got all this money in the bank. We may as well start using some of it. Yeah, treat yourself. Exactly. Lord knows I would if my bank account looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd just buy a lifetime supply of tea. Well, yeah. So I'm working from this side. Are you still on that far side of the field? I'm at the bottom, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Nice. Well, we've got all these workers in the middle <laughs> helping us out. I think they're actually doing a really good job. There doesn't seem to be loads left. In fact, no. they, might, they might just get to a point where they start going over areas that we've mulched. I hope they can detect it, but we are using the... Yeah, we're not using cosplay or anything like that. This is actual the AI that's included in the game. Yeah. And they kind of just do up and downs. They don't really do headland passes. Uh, in fact, okay. I don't think they can even do that. I think it is just an up and down kind of pass that they, they can set up and get them going on yeah so yeah they're doing a good enough job though it seems like it's getting done a lot quicker than if it was just me and you uh, well definitely especially since you said you can't get any bigger what's it vultures yeah we can if i had the mods but i just didn't activate him for, for, uh, didn't think about it at the time faffing uh, always faffing aren't you <laughs> always <laughs> why not um I tell you what would be good though 
is to ask everyone about the survival series because Ooh, yes. I think we should get some suggestions. Well, there's only been two episodes away now. It's a little bit nerve-wracking, to be honest. Why? Well, because it's like, you know, this is my... I've done my theory, I've done my driving test, all oh, the stuck together. Um, what? There's, there's two Oh, tractors. I was going to say, that was a really weird sentence. I've done my <laughs> theory, I've done my driving test, oh, they're stuck together. I'm like, well, you've had a really bad driving test there, then. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I passed on my second. <laughs> but anyhow, I've done I've done my theory, I've done my practical. It's like heading into the real world now. Time yeah. to get my big girl trousers on. Well, there you go. There you yeah. go. You'll be fine. It's a game. I We're going to have but... fun. Yeah. I promise. Exactly. It'll, be, it'll be good. It'll be a good laugh because we've got to start off with nothing and try and you know make something, which is always a good little challenge. Yeah, um, I think it'll be very satisfying. It should be, hopefully, yeah. Uh, but what the, I want to yeah. know is what map? What map do people... I want to take suggestions. I want everyone that's watching to give us the suggestions and then we'll go off kind of like the, what the majority kind of think overall. So we want to know what map we should play on. Uh, is it going to be like a, like a proper farm map or are we going to be like a, a No Man's Land style map where it's the middle of nowhere and yeah there's like a load of trees for us that we can actually start working on um also what are the rules going to be can we start off with uh like 20 20 000 or we start off with literally zero and just a few little bits of equipment um i personally would probably think that it might be good just to start off with two trailers very small old ones two small old tractors chainsaws and you know anything like that maybe even a really old mower or cedar uh, just to kind of get going. Uh, probably more like a mower because we can make money just off grass then. Yeah. Um, and then we also want to know, like, the rules. Are we allowed to lease anything? Uh, is it no leasing allowed? Uh, do we have to buy all our equipment? Because, uh, yeah, I think we should find that out, what people think is the best way to go about it. Definitely. Um, yeah. I didn't realise there were so many possibilities. Oh, would what, it run me over? What, what do you mean? With, like, you know, the rules and stuff. I don't know. I just kind of thought it'd be like, oh, okay, here you go. Run a map. And uh, off you go. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, technically, they're just rules you set for yourself. There's no, like... Um, you can't set them within the game. It's just something that you have to make sure kind of, like, you abide to. Um, uh, okay. So if if some like let's say we say we can't lease anything like technically you could go into the game and still lease something but you then you're breaking the rules that you set out for yourself. Yeah. I'll let you finish that bit off. Oh sorry, I can't tell no, what's fine. you what's. We're the green uh, one. We're the green tractors. They're the yellow oh, okay. ones. Okay. And I know you're not colour blind. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe slightly blind. Didn't you have a roll, but it's all good. <laughs> no, you're not. I just think my brain doesn't decide to kick in oh. sometimes. No, <laughs> yeah, you're all right. You're fine. It's long days at work, coming home and switching mm. off. It's, it's, it's difficult to switch back on again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially on a seven-day week. I, I feel like my brain's already gone because it knows that I've got to slog through seven days somehow. Yeah. And then it's Mother's true. Day at the weekend. And my dad's birthday's next week. Yeah. So, nice. Yeah, it's just... Uh, my brain's kind of gone, mm, too much stuff to think about. We're just going to procrastinate and delay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. That tractor down there, you see that JCB that's near you? Yeah. Is it just a fast drive it. Yeah. Do you want to just drive it off the boundary of the field? Uh, for yeah. me. Uh, Start, start, there we go. So, we've done the mulching. First step done. Field looks a lot better already. The weeds have gone because we've mulched them away, but we've also mulched all that stalks. Uh, so this was a wheat field. We're actually going to plant in wheat again. Uh, but yeah, this is the state of the field now. So as you can see, nice mulched field ready for the next kind of task. Now, Beautiful. what I want to do... 
exactly it's beautiful <laughs> so the next thing i want to do is i want to bring up the main menu again but i don't want you to go to precision form and i kind of want you to go to the first tab that's the uh, yeah that's the one so if you're on field nine again it's in the color of what the crop was still it's because even though it's uh, harvested and mulched it still was wheat last so it's still that color uh, yeah if you see it says crop types one on the top on the right hand side the filters yeah so if you go to the third one which will be growth yes it should be just like kind of grayed out there's no information there for us no because it's like we we haven't cultivated it it's not a stubble tillage which is technically like a, a shallow cultivation then you've got plowed seed bed growing so if after we plant we can see the different stage of growing obviously when it gets from the, to, to the dark stage of green it's one before they're ready to harvest then there's mm -hmm. harvested remove foliage which is for root crops and withered as if you've made a you've you've done something wrong where you've missed your harvest <laughs> yeah if you go to the next one though this is soil composition this is information that we do need okay so what does it tell you straight away from that it needs plowing Exactly. So that's our next job. We need to plow this field. Uh, now, most fields don't require plowing. There is a, a setting that you can have in game, which is periodic plowing, activated or disabled. Um, if you've got that activated, then every like three or so many harvests, you're supposed to plow. Also with crops like corn, root crops, you need to plow it every time you've harvested just because the, the roots grow so deep. Um, so you, you, your mulch is not really going to do much. You need to plow it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, then there's also needs rolling and mulched. Now, if you just remove the needs plowing by just clicking on it, um, the light filters that you can over the light overlay filters to the map. So if you just click oh, on okay. it on the right yeah. side, yep. Yeah. Can you see now that it's gone purple? Yes, because we've mulched it. Mulched. Yes. So that's it. Just shows that it's it's noticed that and it's mulched. Now we have got stones enabled. Um, and you can see that the like loads of little dots on the field ten at the top. That yeah. shows the stones. Now, if we had stones in this field, we could remove them, uh, but it doesn't look like we've got that. So, if we remove the filters of mulched and rolling and everything else, you can see that this field hasn't got any stones in. No. So again, this is stuff that we need to like kind of look at along the way. But we know we need to plow. This is why I said it's really difficult to show you everything because like this field might not require plowing, so it's not an exact order. Um, yeah. It's, but because we're plowing, we don't need to cultivate because we're already going to set the field up. Now, technically, we could direct seed now without cultivating. Um, we can just go get the seed and now we could plant in. But because we wanted to plow it, because it requires that, we need to make sure we plow it first. Then we can direct seed and we're not going to do any cultiv culti cultivating because what you got to think is if you're using a direct seeder, you don't need to cultivate. You just need to mulch right. it really or shallow cultivate if you haven't got a mulcher, but it's just better to mulch it because you're going to get that 2.5%. Okay. And yeah. if, you're, if it needs plowing, obviously then you plow it, then you direct seed in. Um, if you're not doing that kind of stuff and you know and you haven't got precision farming to worry about, you probably just mulch it, then cultivate it, then plant in or direct seed, whatever you want to do. Um, but some seeders allow you to direct seed in really. So it just means there's less passes in the field, but because we need to plow it anyway, um, we're going to do that. Now, I'll quickly just point out with weeds. Weeds grow depending on what you've done to the field. So if you've plowed it, no weeds are going to appear. Yeah. Because you've plowed deep into the, the kind of the soil. Kind of so destroyed them. Yeah, there's, it's just, there's just no weeds going to grow. So that is one bonus from plowing is we get no weeds. If you do like cultivating and shallow cultivating – you'll get weeds, but you'll get like different kind of layers of weeds. Um, some grow like small and you can use a mechanical weed or some just come up like medium and then you, you have to use a sprayer. Um, so the rest do give weeds basically, but but plowing is the only way to not get weeds. But because you only do that like one every three harvest, you'll probably see weeds more often than you won't. But we don't have to do herbicide in this one, which is pretty cool because we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Sound. So um, if we look at, yeah, let's go Let's go and start the plowing and I'm going to go and spawn in a few of them. If you want to, in fact, I'll show you how to start. Okay. Um, if we jump into our tractors, just unhitch and get into a plow and I'll talk you through a plow because they're not, they're not the easiest things in the world to do, but they're, they're, they're all right. They're just very long and narrow and you do have to turn your plow. 
uh, yeah. unless you're using something like VCA, which is just a bit of an issue, but yeah, we'll go for it. So, what you want to do is kind of like unfold your plow, which is left back and X, or A, sorry, not we're on Xbox. <laughs> left back A, yeah. That's it. Now, when the best way to do this, I would say, is... Uh, I'm just trying to think which way round the plough should be. I probably like it like that. If you can look at my plough now, the way it's turning. Right. Uh, See it? Yes, rotate. Yep. Yeah. So what you do is you rotate it like I have. Go in a nice straight line across the field. So you drop the plough down, right? Yeah. And start driving and it'll start plowing only in the field boundaries unless we press a button but you can see we're getting stones now because we're plowing right, okay. so, so we might have to take care of these these stones but we don't need to worry about that yet if you just start plowing um, and then when you get to the end of your first pass all you need to do is lift the, the plow up then rotate it yeah so you can come back down on yourself okay yeah yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Right, so if you watch me now... Yeah. I'm using that line. Like, can you see what I mean? The The right-hand side of my plough should now line up, when I drop it, with that line in front of me on my right-hand right right okay. side. So you use it as a guideline then. So I've got the edge of the plough just sitting on that line, and yeah. I'm driving in a straight line. Right, so I'm in the in the shop menu. I'm just going to talk through quickly. I'm going to bring in some tools for the workers and for ourselves and make it a little bit easier because obviously I'm just showing you the standard plow. Um, now, there's multiple tools that you can do to change the state of the field, but we need to remove where it says need plowing. So there's a few tools that we can use for that. The standard plow, which is what you've got. Also, a subsoiler does the same thing, but it's a little bit different. It's probably easier to use because it doesn't hang off the side and it's not narrow and long like that kind of standard plow. Um, okay. It, it's like a cultivator. It looks like a cultivator, but it's got the kind of like shovels that go into the ground. I don't know how else to describe them. Um, yeah. They're, fu they're like furrows still, but not on that kind of uh, angle, um, 45 angle that's behind your tractor. Um, yeah. There's also a spader, which is like a, it's like a plow, but it's um, mechanical. So it's got, it can be attached to your PTO on the back and it can be like actually, you know, it's it mechanically rotates. It's not like a like these it's uh you know it's powered it's a powered tool basically yeah um but i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spawn in some of these subs uh these uh subsoilers because they're a lot easier to use they're much bigger and i think the tracks that we've got these will be spot on okay and i actually think we can fly through this then so if you want to just finish off that row that you're on now yeah and i will also remove this plow so do I want to take my plough off? Yeah, you can detach it if you want. And then go down to where the other fast tracks are, you'll see yeah. two items that I've just spawned in. And what Are I'll we do... sticking in these or going in a fast track? Go into the... Keep your John Deere. Okay. Because they are... Uh, it's got more horsepower. Yeah. And then this is technically like a plough, but it's called a subsoil. Wait, are you driving in circles? No. What's going on? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Maybe not so. Oh my gosh! I did a flip! Did you see that? I did not. I did a roly poly! <laughs> oh my gosh! What? There you go. I thought <laughs> I was worried then because I was like, oh no, I'm stuck. And then I was like, no, I'm not. I've just carried on. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> that is technical driving 101. There you go. You can't get stuck if you keep on rolling over. You just got to land the right way up. That is true. That is very true. Now, it's, uh, I'm just going to test this out because it's definitely under the subsolar. But it is leaving us a stubble tillage. Which is fine. Is as long as it removes needs the uh, needs the plow which it is doing so that's great uh, but we have got a lot of stones so we're gonna have to take care of them 
Yeah. So all I need you to do is just kind of up and down, start from wherever, wherever you want, and then I'll bring okay. a few more in. But they are, you can see how they're bigger and easy to use. Oh. Yes, definitely. I thought the plows would fall. Oh, oops. Ah, uh, come on. There you go. I moved it out oh, your way. Were you moving that? Oh. Yeah, I just jumped in it quickly just to help you. Oh, gosh. There's going to be a lot of faffing in this. What I get the hang of is reversing corners. Straight lines, I can just spot manage. With a trailer. Yeah. Practice, honestly, practice on... You know, uh, practice makes perfect and all that they say. Yeah. Keep getting this. Right, I'm just spoiling up loads in now. I know I'm going to keep trying to do jump cuts as well, just so that everyone that's watching doesn't have to see us painfully go through this, because uh, it is a big job to try and fly through, and I think we've picked a big field as well, so... But uh, at Can least I've taught like you... baby one. field, like a starter one. We could, yeah. Like, if we went on a different map, there's many that are just small fields, and it probably would have been better to do, but... I mean, I think this is the smallest field I own on this, so I just thought, eh, why there's not? It. May as well. We may as well. May as um, well. Oh, wow. It's all good. Now... All good in the hood. We're going to see different field texture states, so you can see... You're probably leaving a different texture than what you did when you were ploughing. That's the ploughed state from before, but this is a stubble tillage. It's because it's yeah. not breaking the ground up as, as as deep, is it, with the the kind of tool that we're using. So we're leaving still some of that kind of mulch texture, but we're turning the soil. So it's not as deep um, as it's turning, but at the same time, it is still, you know, prepping the, the ground. Um, now, yeah. not all subsoilers leave that texture. I think it might just be this one. Okay. These, uh, these modded ones, but I will test it out. I'll get in a, a base game subsoil just to see how it how it performs differently. Uh, but yeah, like like I said, I wouldn't worry about learning all the ground textures, what they mean, and so on. I just uh, yeah, just focused on on getting the jobs done and, and learning why we're doing it, which is to break up the soil, getting it ready for the next kind of seeding, um, and and thinking that okay. we need to we need to plow, don't we? Every Every three times, three yeah. harvests. So that's the main reason we're doing it. Because I, I know I, I like when I was getting everything ready for this episode. I thought, oh my god, this is, it's going to be a tricky one to try and do. Um, but yeah, <laughs> what else yeah. to say really? It's not, it's not one like before where we could just try one thing like baling. You know why you're doing it? You're making grass salad. You're baling. Yes. There's just so many different things in this. Like this, even the spaders, you know. Spaders. Like, spaders, yeah. They're like subsoils and like plows. They're just mechanical. They're like basically powered. So you can, you know, put it onto your tractor and turn it on. It's not like these are just a mechanical tool that's attached to the bat. It's the, the reason it's working is because you're using the tractor to drive it through the ground. These actually turn on. So when you drive, they're actually powered, if that makes oh, okay. any sense. Yes. Right, so I've just spawned in a subsoiler over here, and it's a base game one, so it is... I don't usually use subsoilers much, but it is the standard kind of field state, so even though it looks the way it does, it's... Uh, yeah, this is the standard field state to what it should look, so the the stubble tillage, so it doesn't... It's only plows that look like the plowed state. Okay. Cool. A lot in it. It's a lot. I hope I'm not putting you off. <laughs> no, it's just reminds me of when I started doing my job where I met you, and uh, I started with one other guy at the same time. And you'd been there a bit longer, hadn't you? But because of COVID, you you basically not been on this introductory training course that we're all meant to do. It was like three days. And I just remember being sat in that thinking, oh my goodness, what have I signed myself up for? I can't do this job. It's, you know, it's far too technical for me, all this kind of stuff. And now that I'm, you know, actually in the job and used to it, it's like, you know, why did I even panic about that? But yeah, I think it's, I, I definitely find it easier to learn by doing rather than, um, yeah, you you're know. a practical worker, not a 
uh, a, like a, a literal. Yeah. I also have a really big problem where whenever I'm sat and someone's talking in like a meeting or that kind of format, it just, I don't know what it is, but it just sends me straight to sleep. Uh, I think you were laughing at me in one of those meetings because you saw me there, like, trying not to, <laughs> to Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Out. Definitely. <laughs> like, yeah, it was a... It was a, a big... Well, yeah. I really struggle with it. I don't know what it is, but... It just... Honestly, it's like the perfect lullaby. I know. Some of them are, though, aren't they? Let's be honest. Some work yeah. meetings are... I think they are for everybody just a little bit quite dull basically <laughs> it is a challenge to try and stay away from some of them oh, honestly it is it it definitely is and then there's some which you think you could have just sent me this in an email or you know i i don't understand how this even applies to what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> oh well Hopefully this isn't like that though. Hopefully no, you're not no, not at asleep. all. That's that that was my point before I went off on a very blah, 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 blah. very long tangent. I'm very good at doing that. Oh no, he's stuck in the ditch. <laughs> oh well, he'll be alright. <laughs> he's gone sleep scruffed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was your story, not mine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Why? That's so funny. I don't know. I'm crying. Okay. I don't know why it's so funny. You're off your head, honestly. You're off your head. It's like. Right, so I know you just lost connection, but you should be back. Yes, the Wi Fi is not on our side tonight. I know. I think it's uh, just having one of them days in it. It's like me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but what I've done, just so everyone's like up to date with what we're getting through, we're obviously using subsoilers because they're, they're bigger and they obviously suit this field size more. We're, we aren't leaving the ploughed state, but we are removing we are removing the the need for ploughing. So even though we're using subsoilers and you know, we're not using a plough, we're still we're still getting rid of the requirement to plough, which is good because it means we can get the best yield still. Um, I don't know whereabouts you are now, because you've spawned in wherever you spawned into. Oh, I'm in a different... John Deere. Okay. Uh, I'll get back in this one, I guess. I am... Where am I? In a field. Um... Okay. <laughs> uh, now there's loads of stones, so I've actually set a stone collector going. So okay. it's just starting on the, the far hand side to where you are. Um, yeah. And it's just going through, collecting stone. It's actually flying through. But the good thing about it is it's leaving the field in a cultivated state. So you've actually seen a ploughed state, like the ground texture that is, or what you, what you visualise. You've yes. seen the ploughed one, which is how you started. We use a subsoiler, so it's still bringing up stones and we're getting rid of the ploughed, need, need for ploughed on the field. Um, so it doesn't need ploughing anymore. Uh, yeah. But we are now actually seeing a cultivated one because, yeah, it's uh, it's using the stone collector. So as it's picking up the stones, it kind of yeah. also cultivates the field. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to tab through because it's actually blocked at the moment, but I must have that many bloody vehicles. It's taking forever. <laughs> there we go. Let's move this out of the way for him. Now, the reason we collect stones, one, it does damage to your tractor. So, especially planters. So it's not really the tractor because the tyres can, you know, happily go over stones in the field. But when you start using a planter in the field, you know, it's not nice for the planter as it's hitting all these stones and so on. So, that's why we're, yeah, collecting these stones. Uh, the good thing about it as well is yeah. you can actually cr take it to like a stone crusher in game and turn it into lime so it does it means you don't have to purchase lime because what you'll notice is when we start spreading lime it goes down so quick um, and you right. need a lot of it yes 
especially for a, a field this size, uh, we'll be using yeah. quite a bit of it. So it's good I mean, to, to to have you know stones on for that reason, but it is a pain. I actually don't play with stones on. I turn it off because I just oh, find that it's yeah, it's just an extra reason to go in the field. But I wanted to try and just show you everything. Um, yeah. So you know, I, as soon as you start using plows, subsoil as cultivators, you're going to start bringing up stones from the ground because that's that's what we're doing. We're kind of turning the soil, so we're also bringing yeah. stones up. Yeah, I mean, um, I've never obviously limed a field for farming purposes, but with the with the horses, we used to lime our field every few years because, um, yeah. fun fact. Um, you ha the reason you have to go and pick up horse poo, um, which you've probably seen people doing, is because where horses poo, they won't eat if it's just left to rot into the ground because okay. it makes the ground go acidic. So you have there to sort go. of lime it every now and again to keep the grass coming through nice so they've actually got some food. Nice. I didn't actually know that, so they Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly sure it's acidic. Yeah, it would be, because otherwise you wouldn't put lime on it. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. But it, it'd be good, because at the end of this, like, I am using modded stone clots, so they're a little bit bigger, kind of work at faster rates, but can also hold a lot, a lot of stones in this kind of, like, box that they've got at the back. Yeah. yeah but it, when it's all done and we collect all the stones, you can actually tip all the stones out and you'll see it, and then if you wanted to, we could actually take it to a stone crusher, turn it into lime, but I don't think we should play with stones on personally in the next in this survival series just because i i don't okay. like doing it but it's good to know and, and try for yourself because then you know you might think differently you might like it hmm. yeah i mean whatever floats your boat i'm happy do you harrow fields in farming chain harrowing yeah uh, no i mean they don't add that it's not in the game basically but i'd love it to be in the game because you know, there is a lot of dry grass and wastage on fields, isn't it? And basically farmers, you know, dairy farmers chain harrow their grass fields just to take off all the dead grass. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that's another thing that I've, I've, I've I helped with on the field. I mean, it's not a big field by any means. It's just under two acres. But yeah, just hanging off the back of my dad's Toyota, watching it, making sure it's doing its job properly and uh, getting very motion sick. <laughs> 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 it's cool though I mean I'd love to, I'd love it if they did add chain harrowing in especially like if it you know even if they just put a chain harrows in and then said if you if you go over your fields a grass field and chain harrow it doesn't really do much to it but it gives you a better yield because you're removing all the, the dried dead grass uh, that's kind of yeah. like in it it just cleans the field up really doesn't it hmm. exactly and um, yeah I don't know I just wondering that's all I was going to say something else, but I've forgotten. Uh, so whereabouts are you now? Uh, I'm down the other end of the field. Down the other end of the field. Where's that? Oh, you're over here. Parked yeah. up. Mm -hmm. Radio. Do you want to do a bit of stone collecting if I spawn one in? Can do, yeah. You can go to, to, to the middle of the field and then... Okay. And I'll give you the... There you go. So there's one here. So if you just connect to it here... And then pick the middle and then, yeah, just start driving just to help him out. I've got two workers going. One's on your left here now coming up. In fact, he's right behind you, so you need to... There you go. Yeah, just, uh... Yes, that's what I was going to say. It's amazing how it works. You know, how, how... Did someone just go out one day and decide, oh, yeah, that's, you know... That's that's something that works. That actually benefits it. Like, what's that? With a lot of different things with farming. Like, I mean, stone collecting is a fairly obvious one, but stuff like harrowing or rolling. You know, you wouldn't necessarily think, oh yes, let me go take a massive roller over this field and compress all the soil to to help the yeah. crops. I mean, grass rolling's done mainly. Like in this one, it doesn't really. Like we have grass rollers, but it does, it's pointless. It kind of does nothing. It yeah. really is. Uh, now, the main reason they're used in real life by actual farmers is because it makes the grass grow back stronger. Right, okay. So, 
So it makes for a better crop. Yeah, because, uh, well, yeah, it just makes it stronger, grow back stronger. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shame they don't add stuff like that. And I think a lot of it is more arable side, whereas that's kind of focused on grass grass work and tip for farmers that need it for feed. Um, yeah. Yeah, really, all you can do with grass work, really, is just mow and make silage and hay and stuff like that. It's not... There isn't more of a focus on it, as the would be nice if they did, but... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So I know we're trying a lot of stuff here that we probably won't need to try when we get to playing on the survival series. Because, you know, if we don't play with stones on, this is pointless and we don't even need to play with plowing on really. It'd be nice to because, you know, uh, even if it's just per periodic plowing where it's like once every three harvests. Um, but most of the time what you'll do is you'll mul mulch it, you'll mulch it, then you'll uh, direct seed in really. You don't really need to do much else after that. So there's only two jobs. But with this, you've seen plowing, you've seen technically uh, the stone collecting, also, we've done subsoiling, so you've seen like the cultivated state, the stubble uh, tillage state, which is done yeah. by the the shallow, which is done by a shallow cultivator or a subsoiler. You've also seen the plowing, and now because this stone collector that you're doing, you, you're probably leaving a cultivated texture. In fact, in fact, it might even be a seed bed, bed texture. Let me just check that. Okay. okay. Uh, we are leaving a cultivated, so it is cultivated this is actually in front of us now cultivated so like this is a perfect like this ground texture is kind of like perfect for what for planting in basically um yeah there won't be actually that much difference but we need to put lime down so really we could have put lime down before collecting all these stones but it's doing the job it's all good yeah i mean wouldn't it have taken some lime off though uh if we'd done it before collecting the stones well in theory, you're probably right, I guess, but the game doesn't work like that. But I know what you mean. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we're just collecting stones. So because we're using stone collectors, you're just going over collecting stones, really. Yeah. But I like the fact we've got workers because it's making this big field uh, a lot easier. Definitely. Uh Craft. It's you, that is. You should just carry it on with your pass. I was just trying to grab them, but it's a mess. I know. Because apparently I can't drive in a straight line anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Do you spike anything. my brew? What with? I don't know. Normal. 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 Well, it's definitely not normalness. <laughs> I would never tarnish a brew in such way. No, that's true. That's true. Talking to brews, you had a few people saying that they, um, you know, they also had brew in a bottle. So I came up with the nickname Brew Babies. Brew Babies? Thought, yeah. Brew <laughs> Babies. <laughs> Start to call, you know, do what you want. <laughs> Religion, I maybe. I was, I was glad as well that I wasn't the only one. I, f I was starting to think, did, do you know, <laughs> was it not the yeah. right thing for my dad to do? But what wasn't reassuring was no one else said that their parents used to give them strong alcohol to uh, clear. I'd be more, be more worried about the nettle, the nettle soup and stuff. And I saw one person say that they've had nettle tea, but I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure not many people have had nettle soup. I mean, it's definitely not the weirdest thing my dad's plated up. I know. I'm, oh, I'm just glad me. Yeah, I'm glad I did. I, was, I'm, I feel <laughs> privileged to not have been given nettle soup as a child. You know what? It's not. It's really not bad. I mean, it doesn't sting you or anything. Of course it doesn't. I know that. It's just, it, I don't imagine it tastes that nice. It's nettles. <laughs> it's very earthy. I mean, we used to just, like, go on a walk and pick some up and then clean it and yeah Fair play. I mean I think the weirdest one well not the weirdest but yeah a strange one was uh, when we found some snails fed him carrots for two weeks 
to make sure that everything inside him was cleared out and then ate him. Snails are not nice, they just taste like old, flavourless chewing gum. I like have no just... words. No words. I'm sorry, but anyone that eats <laughs> snails just hasn't been KFC. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't until I was like 18. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Honestly. Well, yeah. So uh, anyway, fully on that we'll... bombshell. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's what the French do, isn't it? Bonjour, Probably. la onion soup. Uh, I can't remember any from Spanish in school. It's a very long time ago. <laughs> nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Right, let's do some live spreading instead of talking about eating snails. Okay, I'll make them for you sometimes if you want. I'm all right, honestly. I, I really appreciate the offer. <laughs> I'm all good, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, do right, I need so, this tractor? Yeah, any tractor you want to pick out them, all, all will be all right with that. Okay. So this will actually be the first thing we're do we've done properly for precision farming, I think, because, yeah, we've taken oh. soil samples, but uh, we need to do the pH now. We need to yeah. get the, li with the lime down. Right, so when you've attached to that, that's the spreader. It's like the, one of the biggest ones you can get in the game. It's actually a base game one, so it's not a mod or anything. Uh, we basically need to fill it up with lime. Now, you can do that by obviously getting a telehandle like we've used before, bring, bringing the bags up, like kind of hovering it over, and then you'll see it just automatically fill in or kind yeah. of drop in. But there's also another way, and this is the easiest way to do, so we'll do that. So have you seen how I've opened my spreader? I know you're unfolding the spreader right now, but you uh -huh. probably shouldn't do that just yet, just because it might be a little bit tricky for oh. you loading in. There we go. There you go. Yeah. So if you kind of come to these line bags, there's like three stacks of eight. If you just pick okay. the far eight and just drive next to it, you should get something come up on your that, that F1 menu at the top left that says refill fertilize spreader. Okay, okay. So if you just drive forward there, that's, that's spot on. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, I've got it. Right, so if you just fill up now and just let the lime go in, you'll see that then all of a sudden your map, your mini map in the bottom left corner, changes yeah. now to yellow because it's sensing that we've got lime in there and we want to be doing precision farming. Now, this is where precision farming takes over and does the automatic application rate. So you've also got in your F1 menu just at the bottom, it'll tell you, even though we're not in the field that we're going to be working, we're actually in this corn one. Uh, yeah. It'll still tell you that it's like currently six, but for this target, which is the silty clay, it needs to be seven. So it's going to add one value of pH to the score. Okay. Just see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so you have to keep clicking because each big bag's 2,000. So every time a bag empties, you have to keep clicking again to refill. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I might need to move it further forward. Probably. There we go. But you just want to try and fill it up because this is going to empty quick. But what we'll do... Yeah. Because we'll do a bit of a cheat when it does, uh, just to kind of get through it. You can basically, um, uh, what I can do is just like, I'll show you through the F12 menu how to fill it up. So you can see that now on your mini map, you've probably seen how green it's going quite green. It's because we're obviously getting up to the the pH level of like uh, more to neutral, isn't it? So yes. not too bad. And we just keep working up and down the field oh. <laughs> and watching your beautiful driving skills there <laughs> exactly don't you know it you honestly it's tricky to start with especially reversing with a trailer or anything that's hitched on the back the only way you're ever going to get anything like comfortable with that is just by doing it more and more practicing it's yeah it's, you know it's 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 just unnatural isn't it to rev kind of drive the opposite way if you've never done it before yeah, I mean, you struggle. So, bleh, you saw how much I struggled going from a manual to an automatic. So, I know which is strange because, well, it's usually the other way around. Yeah, People struggle going to manual. Well, what kind, of, what kind manual. of camera are you using right now? Uh, like out, quite outside. out. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So the further out with this because yeah, you you need to be able to see it. Um, and if you think you've missed bits, you might not have, because I'm turning my spreader on here, and I haven't. The best way to find out if you missed bits is to look for the yellow on your minimap. Okay. Because like them, them little stretches in the middle there are actually pH. It's just the texture hasn't applied to them. Right. Yep. 
I don't know where you're going, so I'm just going to tell you what I'll do. I'll do the other side of the field. Okay. It's probably the best thing to do. Yeah. Right, so I just thought I'd jump back in, just to give a bit of an update on how we're getting on. We're doing all right, aren't we? I think so, yeah. I wouldn't worry about doing that. I'm going to sort the headland out, so, yeah, you okay. don't need to drive into the ditch. Don't worry about that. Um, can you, Have you seen the changes in the, the pH for the field kind of soil yes. type? I have. It's, it's going from, like, a yellowy colour to quite a nice green. That's it. But have you also noticed that sometimes... It's like application rate. So you see how it says lime application in that little bar and it's giving you the kind of like oh, yeah. colour thing. Sometimes it's like maybe plus one. Sometimes it might be plus 1.125. Um, that's because you're going into different soil types. So like right now it's telling me that I'm in loam. Oh, okay. Can you see where it says that for you? It's just an increasing oh, yeah. pH. Yeah, I can see it. It keeps changing. I hadn't noticed that, I'll be honest. Like I've just that, gone from loam to sandy loam, back to loam, back to sandy loam, yeah. Yeah, and it'll tell you the target for that. So the target for silty clay is seven. So it's applying whatever it needs to be to get to that seven, if that makes sense. That is so clever. That's precision farming. Without precision farming, it doesn't do that. You just put lime down and it'll right. just say, you know, like it said, when it says uh, needs to plow. Yeah. It'll just say needs lime. And then you give it lime, and then it just doesn't need lime anymore, basically. that That's okay. all you'll get from the base game. Whereas this is actually telling you the actual pH. It's giving you that kind of information. Yeah. And you know me from my background in analytical chemistry and all of the work that I've done. That That's right up my street of nerd level. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I suppose, is it... No, you, were, you did feed, didn't you, more than anything? Uh, yeah, I've done a mixture. Dairy, feed. Um, I've even done... Um, just like finished products of kind of ceramics as well. I've worked in a ceramic lab. Nice. I've thrown pottery. What, people? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you shouldn't oh, do that. Oh, what a dad joke. No, like... Proud um <laughs> <laughs> No, like... um. What's it, my Bobby? Uh, on, a, on a pottery yeah. wheel. Yeah, yeah. Well, they did that there, in all fairness. They made um, colours for ceramics and uh, they tested out, like... The glazes? Yeah, the glazes. And they also did the actual... Um, so, say, you know when you build a house and you mm -hmm. pick your colour of brick? So yeah. even though... Like, things like that. So they'd make the colours that would go into the to the bricks to make them, like, an orange colour or maybe if you wanted to give it a red colour or, you know, d you know different things like, you know, you know, like houses are built with different coloured bricks and stuff like that. So they made that, um, yeah, um, basically it was a mineral company, really. They made different minerals and additives and stuff like that, but not okay. for feed, but they did it for, like, ceramics or the aerospace industry. Um, yeah. They actually, they actually made... Um, it was a product that they used in casting. I think you've just left, haven't you? Right, so I know you've just lost connection, but you are still with me in chat. There you go. Yeah. So I've accepted you, so you can join back in now. Whoop, whoop. Um, what I was saying about uh, some of the stuff I've worked with, um, in that mineral company that I worked for, they, they did additives, but it was for the different, a different sector. So it wasn't for animal feeds or the agricultural industry. It was more for the industrial status, you know, industry with... And also, um, like, the building sector, you know, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. But one of the most interesting things I did was I worked in the analytical chemistry within that lab, because there's loads of different labs within the big lab. And uh, I used to test... Um, it was for the castings of Rolls-Royce uh, jet engines, so the engines that what? they use in, like, planes. It was a, a casting that they used... Um, it was basically made out of silica, and they used to use it when... they they kind of coat the casting so they don't stick as they're making these obviously high strength durability engine parts and stuff made out of like steel and aluminium or whatever it is yeah um, so that was really interesting oh that does sound very cool i'll be honest yeah it's, it was i i really enjoyed it i learned a lot going through them different labs and you know starting off in a dairy lab and obviously learnt a lot about 
farming from just that lab alone, but more the milking side, the cheese side, and uh, cream, and you know, even milkshakes were made at this dairy that I worked at. Oh. Um, so there was a yeah a good a good selection of stuff there, and then I moved over to several labs after that. The best being the one that I actually think the the most fun I had was working for the big mineral company that uh, supplied feed for animals because I got yeah. to test in the lab like grass, fresh grass. I got to test maize silage. I got to test like all different types of pig food, chicken feed, um, hmm. cow, like it, all the all the cakes that they add to like the TMR mixes for cows. And, even, and I got to learn the animals as well, why they needed these kind of dietary requirements and uh, yeah. how their actual stomachs worked and stuff like that. So I learned a lot about all the animals because of the, the job that I was in, which I found fascinating because I've always had this you know just passion for farming uh you know i wasn't lucky enough to kind of go into the farming sector and business kind of because i obviously don't have the money for a farm but no. um i was very lucky to to learn it and you know as a kid that used to have a tractors and play you know on his little car mat with all his toy tractors it was just right up my street it was perfect yeah. brilliant no it's uh it's interesting work to be fair um yeah yeah, but I find it funny because uh, when I was younger, my mum wanted me to apply for a job in the milk for the milk recorder, recordancy, something like that. It's the people who go and like collect the samples from the farmers of the milk, yeah, uh, send it off. Uh, but one thing about me is I am absolutely terrified of cows, and I just thought. Yeah, that would that would be a great fit job, Mum. I'd you know, I'd be <laughs> petrified. I love I've... cows, like I do. No. I have to Do say. you remember when I met you on that site and there was a bull in the field with a load of cows and yeah. calves and I was laughing you... my head off. Yeah, and so was I, but you said you never <laughs> heard someone laugh in such a terrified way. <laughs> I know. I think you were protected in your vehicle, but there was just all these cows around your vehicle because you they were like, "Ooh, who's this new person in this new yeah. truck and stuff?" And yeah, it was I hilarious. locked the doors because I got I got paranoid that they'd be able to open the doors. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I just thought to be fair, if that bull came at me sideways in this little like, I, I think I was in a Fiat Doblo at the time, it will yeah. tip it. The, I've always told you, dead simple way with a bull: don't trust any bull, but any bull that's got a ring in its nose. They're the yeah. ones you avoid. The, the, the reason mean, they've got yeah. the ring is to tell people that these are not nice bulls. No, I mean obviously where I grew up, I grew around, grew up around a lot of cows and stuff. But yeah, they're just. I think it's because I've got no respect. Like I know horses are kind of a similar animal in terms of size and stuff, but cows are just they don't care. They trample people. You know, you hear stories of farmers being trampled and stuff, whereas horses... Yeah, but cows are very relaxed and they, tra I feel <laughs> like they trample people. They are, they are relaxed. Like, mm. they trample people through fear. They don't trample people because they're aggressive unless it is a bull. Uh, usually, like, they've been spooked or, you know, you're, you're maybe near their calf and they're quite protective. It's usually through fear that they do that kind of mm. stuff. So it's just about being aware, I'd say. But anyway... Yeah, I just don't trust them. <laughs> fair point. I know it's big, if I have to walk through a cow field... I always pick up a nice big stick before I go through, so at least I can give them a bit of a whack if they get too close. <laughs> Fair play. Right, you're going to need your John Deere now. It's time to uh, do some seeding. Okay. Uh, let me just one second. Um, we are slowly getting through this. We're doing well. Yeah, we are. Just smashing it out. Yep. Heartache Until I saw you light And it's got kind of 
That's pretty much it. I know that was a, a long-winded whole process, but this field, from where it started in the state it was in, with all them weeds that were kind of just, you know, from just it was in a bad state. But now we've pretty much done everything except the fertilizing and and obviously sorting out the weeds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna progress time. We're gonna get this growth stage a little bit up till probably trying to think because we don't need to worry about like missing out anything you know we've got pro we've got productions going but they'll all just finish off and it'll be fine so i'm going to speed up time now whilst you're in the game and whilst we we'll probably see it all we're going oh, to go time paid <laughs> no, you, they've taken money off you and taken what? more money off us so what? we're now in december and you can see if i just go Merry to about Christmas. midday <laughs> Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Anyway, uh, right. So can you see? Can you see the the crop? Yes. So this is growth stage two. So this is the first growth stage technically that you visualise the plant growing. But you can also see some other things in there. If you can see them, they're very small weeds. See them? My sight isn't that good. If you look in, in the horizon, you might see them just popping out. They like don't look like the crop. Oh uh, yeah. They're like a lighter green. Yeah, like these things. Yeah, they're all weeds. So we want to get them before they get too tall. So if we have a look in the, the menu now as well, yeah, it's a really good indication because if you open up the, the main, the first oh menu. Oh, my goodness. You see all that green? Yeah. Can you see that one strip that's not green? Yeah, that's, that's where we have it. it. Plowed, sorry. Exactly. That's where we plowed. So that gives you a good indication of why, why plowing obviously doesn't give you any weeds so what we need to do is over here i've got two massive sprayers over here uh where's here let's see where i am now near oh the hardies my goodness. so oh. if you want to grab the other one i want to right okay now what we're going to do don't unfold it or else you're going to have a nightmare because it's massive okay what i want you to do though is i want you to change the wheel steering so right now it should just be front steering only but we can make this a lot easier by making it all wheel steering so if you hold right back and click left on the analog yeah you can change it to all wheel there you go and then what we need to do is go over to the herb side which is over here i'll take one ibc you take the other ibc and we're going to refill the sprayers so if you want to go to the one on the right there that's it Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is you take this side of the side of the field, and I'll go all the way down to the other side of the field. If that makes okay. sense. Okay. Yeah. 
um, and then just open up go you know get to the edge and open up and just start killing all them now we have got spot spraying on this i've made sure it had spot spraying and okay. also we're already holding we've got narrow tires so if we had crop destruction on uh, it obviously wouldn't do any crop damage which is ideal you don't want to can you imagine now doing crop damage and all that work you've done oh, i'd cry exactly you got rid so. of that at the perfect time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, I really misjudged how far I needed to leave from the edge. I know. This It's good though, because this is now a big, easy job for us. Yeah. And then we've got this, and then we do it again with fertilizer. So whenever you're ready, turn is it, it gonna, on and you'll... Yeah, is it going to change colour? Uh, it's not going to... Well, they, they'll go like a dead colour. It's like a... Yeah, and you'll see it just start weirdly spot spraying in certain areas. You'll see the spray just dropping out. It's going to be difficult for you to see. I am that far that... zoomed out. Can you see it? Can you see the weeds dying off at least? Because I can. I can just make out... If you like zoom out, you'll see all them little light greener weeds just start disappearing into like a brownie colour. Uh, Oh. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. That's a no then. <laughs> right, so there we go. It's all done. So Ooh. this field now has no... Well, it has weeds, but they're all dead, basically. Um, and it's always better to catch them early like that because they don't go too big. Now, it would have been easier to, for you to see because I know you struggled to see them. If you do let them grow to the full height, then they're easier to see because they kind of come quite colourful. Yeah. So what I want you to do now is I want you to get back in the sprayer. Yeah. Move over to here. and Or where you are, actually, will be fine. Hold right back. Uh, yeah. Sorry, hold left back. Um, no, it's right back and Y. And that will empty the sprayer. Oh, okay. And then what I want you to do is come over here and pick up some fertilizer for the next step. So I'll take right. one IBC, okay. you take the other. Yeah. Um. There you go, so this IBC is now yours. Right, so we just hit January. We're, we're getting through these kind of frozen months now where this is going to go dormant because it is winter wheat. Uh, but if you have a look in the the crop calendar, so if you can remember where that is, you should be able to tell when this is going to be like due to harvest so we know when that, that's going to be happening. Um, it is due to harvest in July to September. Okay, so let's get into spring then and we'll start applying some fertilizer in spring yeah and then pretty much we just wait until harvest season and we're, we're job done now because we you know the planting season in the crop calendar when you yeah. looked at it uh, because we planted right at the end of spring mm -hmm. uh, sorry we planted right at the end of autumn we should still harvest in July because okay. it's over the winter uh, but if imagine if we use that first spring month to plant in, in March, because it's still green, it would mean that we'd probably harvest in September. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Kind of like yes. moves over. Right, so this one's obviously a little bit strange. I don't know what's going on with the map, but I think it might have a bit of a weird um, <laughs> setup when it comes to the weather, because we are in June. And it's snowing, and it's minus 10, can get to minus 40 in June. And yeah, we need to get this fertilizer down. So we're doing it, but it's in the snow. Um, and I think it even says it's going to snow when we're due to harvest. And this is a summer month, so I don't know what's going on. I think it might be. I think be... they've got the months confused because it was like 20 odd degrees in what, uh, December? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit strange. But if we just get the fertilizer down, that's all that matters because. We need the the most important thing for yield is fertilizer. Like without the fertilizer, yeah. we really are kind of like kicking ourselves pretty bad. 
So yeah. we just, uh, yeah, just fertilize. I can remove Open snow. Up. Hopefully that helped. There we go. I've removed snow. Does that happen for you? Yeah, it's gone. Well, go so in. you probably, if you, if oh, it's dead difficult to see, but if you just have a quick look, you might see that it's gone darker in areas, but it doesn't matter if not. We're, we're nearly done anyway, aren't we? Yeah. Right, so there we go. Everything's done, finally. It might be minus 10 and it might be due to snow soon, but we are at the... <laughs> technically, this is the final growth stage before it turns into harvestable wheat. Uh, so if you have a look at the information on your right, you can see in the field info it says wheat growing, then 7 out of 7 forage, which means it's in the final growth stage before being re ready to harvest. It also tells yeah. you the required tyres there, so it means you have to wear a narrow or you're going to do crop damage. Uh, okay. Um, and then if you look at the precision farming school, we're all in the perfect, the green, the pH is good, the in, we're in silty clay. We've got nice. our maximum potential yield, which is 89%. And if we kind of scoot over to here, now I'm in loam. Yeah. This, this way, you can see that it says we've got the 125. So this field is now perfect. I don't know where you've gone. I'm right here. Yeah, there you go. So it's perfect. We've done everything down to the T, which is great. Perfect. Mash that out. I know, it took a while, but we got there. Yeah. Uh, before we do move over to harvest, we're, we're not going to harvest it, but we're just before we just make sure that so you can see that it's ready to harvest and all that, if you go to the Precision Farming tab in the menu, yeah. and then go to the nitrogen, any of them really, it doesn't really matter, but you can scroll through and see that you know we're all in the green. Yeah. But if you click on Field 9... Yeah. It should give you some economic analysis. And if you make sure that it's on show total values, uh, not since the reset one, basically. It says show values yeah. since reset. But if you click it so it doesn't say that, it should just say minus 12,000 in total. Oh, mine says minus 6,000. Yeah, that's because you need to press X. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So basically the other one's a total of all anything ever done in that field that could be including like 10 harvests right okay but this one's just from this prep between the last harvest okay so i reset yeah. it for this reason so we can have a look at what it's cost us so you can see that we've put twenty-two thousand liters of lime down that's cost us five thousand so that's a negative liquid yeah. fertilizer we've put two and a half thousand liters down that's cost us three thousand seeds have cost us two and a half we've got a bit of cost for herbicide a bit of cost for fuel vehicle maintenance we've also used ar helpers which is 356 pound so we're yeah. already at a loss of 12 and a half grand for that field with the soil sampling um it hasn't actually equated to that yet but we probably be a bit more because an extra 10 grand there so it's like minus twenty two thousand. nice to That's get the field ready uh, sugar honey iced tea That's right. a lot of money <laughs> but when we do the harvest and bring it in then you know it's going to be, you know, a different kettle of fish. But let's just do the final thing for ending this video because it has been a very long one. I'm hoping you're still interested. <laughs> Definitely. I've, I've enjoyed it. Right, so there you go. We're in July. It's ready to harvest. I don't know what's going on with the temperature. Just ignore that. That's something <laughs> to do with the map. Uh, we are at minus 8 degrees in July. Uh, I'm sure it'll heat up very quickly <laughs> when the sun comes out. But, yeah, we're there. We're ready to harvest. So, Ooh. you did it. Nice. You did it. From start to finish, you got there. We've done full circle now, haven't we? Pretty much, yeah. We, we've we made the field exactly how we found it. But this time round, like, it'd be interesting to see what we got in that video. If you harvested this, you'd get a lot uh, more now okay. because we, we've, we've maxed it out. We've done everything right. Yeah, so the yield difference. Exactly. But I think on that note, this is going to be a nightmare for me to edit, but I'll get through it. Uh, but, yeah, yeah I think it's... This. I think you can do the outro. I've done enough talking in this episode. <laughs> All right, then. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Please, if you've enjoyed all our faffing and shenanigans, don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe. And, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day, night, whatever time it is that you're watching this. Bye.